So everyone said that my calling was to be a producer, and they probably were right. And it's taken me 40 years to get around to launching my next festival. And I guess, in irony, the Southern Shakespeare Festival that attracted 20,000 people its first weekend from a guy who had no damn experience or no right launching one, just because I went to the National Theater, studied, um, I'm launching my second one, Found Up Fest. And it is a world-changing uh, event in every aspect of it. Because not only is it about entertainment and celebration, it's about doing and solving problems. And, uh, and the opportunities and the location, everyone says location, location, location. I've been looking for this location, and had I not done an Animal Planet show, right, about hunting killer hornets, that then led me to the Smithsonian Project, Killer Hornets, right, which then got uh, the attention of a guy whose wife is fearful of hornets that lives in, lives, lives in Tokyo, a banker, who contacted me and said, please come up and help me at property. Okay? You seen the dominoes, how the dominoes, so I do a Shakespeare festival, right? Um, and I go up to Hakuba, and the moment I saw it, I was like, this is it. This is what I've been looking for since 2010 when I um, wanted to do a project called Found Up Week. Found Up Week was about launching Found Ups, but there was no blockchain, right? So it was kind of like a test run, and I wrote it all out, and Alon was there, but um, I couldn't raise any money for it. So all of the planning was done there and how it would work, but now uh, instead of a week, it's going to be two 20-day uh, sessions, uh, one through uh, uh, the student loans. Here comes a friend, friend, and uh, another one will be in the fall for professionals. And I want to talk about the festival, and I kind of get distracted every time I do. So, um, um, for those that sign up this year, you will get the registration, the kickoff event, the um, uh, the pitch event, and the award ceremony, which is, comes at the end of the event, right? Uh, for for twenty five dollars. That's right. Or twenty five ups. We're launching um, um, basically what's known as a block ticket. So you're gonna buy your block ticket. So it's twenty five ups block ticket, right? BTS. So uh, um, maybe I should just call it twenty five BTS. Twenty five ups, all right? For twenty five ups. One ups is a dollar. Okay. Ups is a block ticket and a block ticket is kind of like a coupon on the um, you know on the blockchain and everything you'll do at this event is going to use a block ticket um, so next year in January we, none of the things up yet right now nothing's up so I'm just so excited I just got to make a video nothing's up so you can't get your you can't get your registration then we'll hopefully get it up Within, uh, well, we got to get it up this, actually, I got to get it shit up today um, for the festival because I'm going to be talking about it. So we need to get a landing page up. I just got to do that. God, I still got to rent a car. <laughs> I got my executive assistant flying in tomorrow night at midnight. I got plenty of time. This is what I love. Um, but I want you uh, to imagine that you, for, for if you are passionate about the blockchain, want to get involved in the blockchain, this is... You can come from both sessions, $25 per session. You can sign up this year. Um, $25 because it's ups, and one ups equals $1, right? So if I say $25, I'm talking about 25 ups. And, um, um, and that gets you two programs. Um, we're going to secure 1,000 um, beds at $10 a bed. That's right. Where in the world, or nowhere in Japan, can you stay in a beautiful house, and you can look at the videos that I have posted about the location, right? It's going to be in this playlist. It's in the Found Ups Fest uh, playlist on my channel, on one of my channels. I think it's Found Ups TV channel. Um, and uh, we're going to secure a thousand beds. We're at a hundred so far. We're going to get to a thousand. 
and it may be $15 a bed right now. It depends on sponsors. It depends on a lot of things because what I want to do is discount, discount, discount the cost because the point of the event is I want to attract the brightest folks out there who are looking to get in the blockchain but don't know how. I know that feeling because I always had that feeling about startups, living in Japan, trying to get into a startup in Silicon Valley and everything else. The blockchain changes all of that. And to have an annual event that's going to grow from this next year, it's going to be uh, basically 60 days, two 20-day day, day periods with a, with a big break in the middle for the team to relax between sessions, um, to basically from late spring to early uh, fall, year-round. 100,000 people coming to this event, 20-day uh, sessions throughout the whole year, creating a blockchain economy, creating um, you know, a place for individuals to come and learn about blockchain, and ultimately the headquarters of FoundUps. And FoundUps is the vision that I shared with the founders of Ethereum back in 2011, 2012. They never gave me credit for my work that helped to define Ethereum. Um, and I've always been a little bitter about that, but I forgive... Mihao Lisi. So if you watch this, Mihao, and and, uh, it, and I don't think maybe Vitalik never even knew. I think Mihao probably just said these were his ideas. I don't know. I don't know how the communication with Mihao and Lisi was, but it doesn't matter. The, the 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 bottom line is I'm a I'm a I am probably your biggest fan uh, for Ethereum, but who cares? The uh, the fact is, um, we can now usher in, and this is what I told. Mihao Lisi back then, um, we can usher a new paradigm for an economic, um, you know, uh, system. I didn't have a name for it back then, but it's social capitalism. Social capitalism basically is capitalism for the 99%. Right now, we have capitalism for the 1%. If you're rich, you make more money, you own all the assets and everything else. It's all about the 1%. It's all about owning. But imagine if we flip that on the head. And I want you to imagine for a second, come with me, this is why this is so important. Imagine an event, you come and have an amazing time, you form teams together, you look around for problems to solve without the idea of, oh, I'm going to write this white paper and make a million dollars, you know, or 50 million or whatever, some stupid ICO. We don't do ICO, we do IBOs, which is another talk in the future. And, um, and the other thing that we do is just like I have, if you research, I have a, I have a system. From idea to IBO to what I call launch as, or, or idea to IBO to launch as a Dano, which is a decentralized autonomous nonprofit organization. I want you to imagine for a moment a world just with, think of all these large corporations out there, every one of them. And I want you to imagine them without a board of directors, okay, without management, run on something called holacracy, which is a decentralized management with roles, by basically volunteers who are paid by the community and by, by Danos themselves. A Dano is basically a World Bank within an ecosystem that is, you know, that is funding more projects to become more Danos that, that, that grow and grow, and they're not based on the, the growth valuation of, of return on investment. They're, they're, they're built on something called um, return on uh, uh, proof of proof of value. Imagine, because nonprofits have great value, but the problem with nonprofits, and I have a master's in nonprofits, and I worked with them for a year before I said, this is bull. I'm getting out of this, this and anyone who, you know, this shit storm. Um, imagine a nonprofit that doesn't have to beg. Imagine nonprofits that are actually maintained by society, okay? You, know, you may be thinking, oh, this is, cap this, is, this, is, this is communism. No, because it's corporations that maintain it, not governments. Governments have nothing to do with fundings of Danos. The money of Danos comes out of the net profits of successful other Danos, which are providing goods and services in a sustainable way to the planet. Okay? That's what they're doing. So imagine, you know, you see a project, you see a pain, you launch yourself as a found up, and that found up gets funding by the ecosystem itself. No need for angels, no need for investors, no need for shares. Eventually, you come to, our, you come to uh, Hakaba, or there'll be a found-up house like this one. You come to one of these, you learn from a mentor like myself. Um, you come to the festival once a year, um, you know, and you participate either as a volunteer, as an action, or as a, as a, as a, as a founder, right, doing a found-up. And uh, we change the world.
So I hope you enjoy this talk. It's kind of long. I make talks too long, but I'm excited. And I want you to be excited too because <sighs> I'm finally feeling like the egg is the, the nut or the egg is cracking for found ups after so many false starts. Now I feel like I'm not in the hands of another person, but in my own hands. I'm in my own direction. I'm in my own um, you know, movement forward. We're no longer susceptible to the whims of, of the one percent. And that's what happened in 2016 was, you know, I ran into two groups and they both wanted to buy the brand and own the brand and launch the brand. And I'm like, the brand is not for sale. The vision is not for sale. I'm not going to do that. You know, and I am the architect, the visionary, the prophet, so to speak. And Foundups is my religion. Foundups is my faith. Foundups is my purpose in life. You know, you can't buy that. Not with all or any gold in the world.